Hello and welcome to the OWASP App Sex Tutorial Series. My name is Jerry Hoff and this is episode number one. So this video is the first in a series of videos aimed at demonstrating and exposing the most common security challenges that web developers face when building web applications. Now, to get the most out of this series, you really should already have a pretty good handle on programming and web development in general. So ideally, you've already built multiple web applications and you have a pretty good handle on the basics as far as web architecture and how web applications are constructed. So having said that, let's go ahead and just jump into talking about application security. Now, the truth is, most developers already think their web apps are secure. In fact, you might also think that the web applications you use in your day-to-day -day life are also very secure. So we all do things like banking and email and mortgage and so forth on the web. And the common thought is, hey, these sites must be secure. And some do a much better job than others. But the vast majority are not secure. And by saying that they're not secure, what I mean specifically is that the code contains some type of flaw or some type of bug that can be exploited so that an attacker can misuse the application somehow. Uh, that usually means they can get access to private data or data that they're not authorized to see. They can also use the web application as a platform to actually attack other users. We're going to be getting into a whole bunch of different tactics and tricks that attackers use in order to achieve this. And we'll be looking at the exact specifics of those attacks starting with the next episode. Now, before we go any further, let me just say that really, historically, HTTP was not even designed to be secure. It was designed for static read-only pages to be shared internally amongst groups of scientists, not for what we use it today, banking, email, healthcare provider, financial information, payroll information, healthcare information. That wasn't even considered when the specification was originally developed. They didn't even have sessions initially. All of the security features that we have in HTTP, of which there aren't very many, were bolted on later. And that's pretty much how things stand to this very day. So HTTP has some pretty serious inherent architectural security flaws, which sorely need to be addressed. Uh, some people have suggested, hey, we should just throw the whole web away and start over. From a security perspective, we can debate it, but that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So what we need to do is we need to be developing and writing code in a defensive way to add in these features that aren't inherent within the protocol. So in order to do this effectively, we need to start looking at our web applications the way that an attacker would look at the web application. So we need to start seeing it through the eyes of the bad guys. Um, so what flaws would they be aware of? Or what flaws do, do we need to address? Well, there's a lot. So there's problems inherent in the way that the web browser uh, works, actually. The way that the web browser handles sessions, the way that the web browser handles JavaScript, even the way the web browser handles transparency can be exploited. Uh, we have to be concerned about how the data is transported from the client side to the server side. We have to pay pretty close attention to the way that we handle authentication, how we handle also authorization, how files are uploaded and downloaded from the web server, how the, the web server interacts with the database, and how it interacts with web services. All of these areas are hotspots that can be exploited by an attacker. On top of that, you throw things like Ajax, Flash, Flex, Silverlight, uh, Java applets, and, and an assortment of other areas that we'll be getting into later, and you wind up with a pretty large attack surface area, meaning all the different areas that can be exploited by the attacker to misuse your application. So what you see up here is just a fraction of the, of the total possible security issues that can plague a web application. And on top of that, attackers are coming up with new and innovative ways to exploit web applications all the time. So it really is an ongoing challenge to build secure web applications. At this point, you might be thinking, hey, Jerry, if this is such a serious problem, then how come web applications aren't being hacked all the time? Well, they are. Every day, there's news stories of websites losing customer data, losing passwords, um, identity theft, lost records, and even home routers and smartphones uh, are subject to these 
these types of attacks that we're going to be discussing uh, through the course of this series. So I think it's pretty safe to say that you know this is definitely a problem. Now, to be completely clear, this series is not about network security. That's not what we're discussing. Things like firewalls, routers, patching, antivirus, all those things are extremely vital and we, we build on top of that security. But we're leaving that stuff to the infrastructure guys. What we will be discussing is application security, which is a field of security dedicated to defensive programming techniques. So some of the issues will require just some code tweaking in order to fix. Uh, others will require an entire set of security controls. And ultimately, what we'll be discussing is to really get reliable, reproducible results in terms of security, we'll have to make changes to the entire way that we write software. So the entire software development life cycle from the very beginning to deployment and then beyond. Uh, because security is not a one-time event. Security is an ongoing process. So this series definitely is geared towards developers, architects, QA, people who deal with the actual code itself. And it doesn't really matter what language you're using to develop web applications. So it can be Java, it can be .NET, PHP, Rails, Python. The core issues that we'll be discussing are pretty much the same regardless of the language. Which pretty much brings us to these guys, OWASP, which is the Open Web Application Security Project. OWASP is a group of dedicated individuals who volunteer their time and expertise to spreading the word about secure software development. So this series is going to go and explain many of the great OWASP projects, which are all free and open source, which you can download and immediately start using to improve the security posture of your applications. We're also going to be spending time on the OWASP website, where you can find documentation and other resources relating to application security. It really is one of the largest repositories of application security knowledge that you can find consolidated in one place, probably on the entire web. So to let you know what is coming up in the next couple episodes, we are going to be breaking down one of the most popular OWASP projects, the OWASP Top 10. So we're going to go through these guys one by one in the next several episodes. So if you want to find out more about XSS, CSRF, DOR, SQLI, but all in plain English, then you've come to the right place. So that's where I'm going to leave this first episode. I hope I've piqued your interest enough so that you come back and learn more about application security. Now, the next episode, we're going to dive right into issue number one on the OWASP top 10 list, and we're going to discuss how to defend against an assortment of injection attacks.